is a nice segue into Rocky Balboa and, and, and the brilliance of this film and, and a little bit about how the story came to you, how you got involved in that. Well, uh, Sylvester had auditioned for me uh, twice before. Once when I was down in uh, Miami Beach doing a picture with Jackie Mason, and he was uh, at the University of Miami at the time. He came in and auditioned for that. And then when I was doing a picture with Burt Reynolds, W.W. and the Dixie Dance Kings, right. he came in and auditioned for that. Um, and, and neither time um, did he get the job. Did he make an impression, though? Do you remember? Did you remember him? Oh, absolutely. And I had seen uh, Lords of Flatbush, mm, yeah. which was the picture he made uh, before uh, Rocky. And uh, an old friend of mine uh, had um, uh, uh, gotten a job with uh, the producers. I had recommended them. Uh, him to these uh, producers, uh, Chardoff and Winkler, and um, he uh, he had met uh, Sylvester and brought uh, Sylvester into them as an actor, and uh, so they met Sylvester and they talked about blah blah blah, and as Sylvester was leaving, he said, "You know, I also write scripts," and they said, "Oh, well, we'll be happy to read what you've written." So he gets this uh, script over to them and they read the script and they they like it and they said. Yeah, we'd like to uh, like to buy that. He said, "Well, I've already sold that script. Uh, that was Paradise Alley, um, but I'll write you another one." And a week later, uh, he brought them Rocky, and um, they liked it. And they said, "Okay, uh, we'll we'll buy this one." He said, "Good, but I play Rocky." They, ha ha ha! No, 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 you don't play Rocky. We'll find uh, we'll find a star to play Rocky. Mm -hmm. And he said. Mm, no, if you want this script, I play Rocky, or I don't sell it. Right. And at this point, uh, uh, Sylvester and Sasha were living in a very small place, and uh, um, Sage had just been born, I think. And um, so he was in no position to turn down anything. Right. And I think... Took a lot of guts. Uh he was offered, I think, about two hundred fifty grand for that pic, uh, for that okay. script, uh, and and he stuck to his guns, thank goodness, and finally uh, uh, they said okay, uh, and United Artists, who had never uh, uh, heard of Sylvester Stallone, they said, well, who who is he? And they said, well, look at this movie, uh, Lords of Flatbush, and uh, you'll you'll see him. So they sat there and they looked at the uh, Lords of Flatbush and they said, well, "Who's, which one is uh, Stallone?" And they said, "Well, the, the the star, that guy." And the star of the picture uh, was an actor named Perry King, who was a tall, blue-eyed, blonde guy, good actor, handsome guy. So United Artists said, "Okay," thinking that they were buying Perry King. So when the first uh, few days uh, dailies came in, they were screening them, and they said, where's Stallone? And they said, that guy's Stallone. He said, no, 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 Stallone's a blonde. So um, that's, how, uh, that's how that that's, came to be. That's how, Rocky got, that's how Rocky got the part. What does that movie mean to you right now? And I know you did, you did obviously the first one, and to me the best one. I mean, it's the, it's, and it's one of the best films, best picture, 1976. Uh, nominated uh, for Mr. Stallone, got an Oscar nomination for that. What do you, how, how does the Rocky thing fit in? When you when someone say hey, you're the guy that did Rocky, what do you think of when that happens? I think how 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 lucky I was, and how how big a part uh, luck uh, plays in uh, in the movie business and in life. And in life. Right? Now we also should remember that uh, Sylvester was nominated for. Uh, best screenplay. And screenplay uh, as well. Because he, uh, right. he, he wrote it uh, also. So, um, uh, Does that hold, obviously, uh, it holds a special place in your heart for you? Um, the underdog story, the way, the way you ended the film, the way it ended everything? Well, the, um, that wasn't the way it uh, was written as far as the ending uh, was concerned. Um, 
Bill Conti, who wrote the, uh, the score, uh, played a huge part in, uh, in that ending. I had um, met uh, Bill a few years before and uh, wanted him to uh, do the music for WW, as a matter of fact. But the folks at uh, Fox knew better, and they said, no, 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 we'll, we'll find an established uh, composer for you. So when uh, Rocky came along with a very low budget, less than a million bucks, Wow. Um, <clears throat> they didn't particularly care who was the uh, composer. And the music budget was $25,000, all in, uh, including the composer's fee, including uh, uh, paying the musicians, uh, the copyists, the um, dubbing, everything, everything the, the, the tape, the works. Uh, so when I uh, started rehearsing the... Uh, the picture, uh, I had looked at a lot of boxing uh, pictures, and I was struck by how phony the boxing looked. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to the producers, the only way this thing is going to look halfway decent is if we have a lot of time to rehearse the boxing, so when we come to shoot it, it will look real. So they went along with that uh, notion. So when uh, I got uh, Carl Weathers and Sylvester in the ring for the first time, I had a little 8 millimeter uh, movie camera, and um, I started uh, shooting the 8 millimeter so I could show it to uh, them. And they started b bouncing around saying, I'll do this and I'll do that. I realized, wait a second, we're going to be here forever. Sylvester, why don't you go home and write this thing out? and we'll uh, practice it like a ballet. Yeah. And he liked that idea. He came back the next day with 32 pages of lefts and rights, and that's what we learned. And I would uh, uh, shoot every day and show them the, uh, the film, and I said, you know, it's got to get a lot better than this, and if you lost a little weight, it would annoy. <laughs> uh, and um, and they, they saw the wisdom uh, of that. Then I took... Uh, uh, this rehearsal footage, and I showed it to uh, to Bill Conti, and I projected it in my little eight millimeter projector, and slowed it down, and played uh, uh, Beethoven's uh, Sixth Symphony behind it, the Pastoral, and you can play Beethoven with leader, and the leader will look good. <laughs> so yeah. I, I I said to Bill, I said, this is what uh, I want. I want a a classical sound to this and it will move it will move it up and bill agreed and had a classical background at juilliard and and um and wrote that uh, terrific score and the way the movie was written to end <coughs> uh rocky uh, uh loses and um they uh uh the crowd uh, comes in to uh uh, carry uh, Apollo Creed out, and uh, the crowd also carried out uh, Rocky. And as Rocky is being carried out on their shoulders, he passes Adrian, and he leans over and he pulls up uh, Adrian. And Adrian and Rocky go out on the uh, on the shoulders of the crowd. Well, when we came to shoot that. Um, the assistant director, Fred Gallo, came up to me and said, well, we don't have enough uh, extras to carry out Sylvester. And I said, you know, obviously the same people are going to carry out. But uh, Sylvester heard that, and he said, you know, maybe he doesn't get carried out. Maybe he just walks out. He walks down the aisle, the crowd, he lost. Nobody pays any attention to him. He sees uh, Adrian there at the uh, back of the... Uh, this, uh, the auditorium, and they join hands and they just walk away. And if you recall, the the original poster was the boy and the girl walking away uh, from the ca camera uh, holding hands. A little silhouette type of thing. And I thought, gee, that, that sounds very poetic. Let's shoot that. So that's what we shot. So I'm putting the picture together, and um, uh, Bill comes in with the last cue. Well... It was a great cue. Uh, but I didn't have the footage to go with that. Because mm -hmm. it sounded like uh, those old Clairol commercials where the boy and the girl are racing across the fields and Slow come motion. in and embrace. 
and I said, "Look, this this cue is 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 a classic. It's great, but I don't have the footage uh, to go with it. But it wouldn't be difficult to get it. All we all we need. We'll keep." Uh, uh, Sylvester in the ring. He'll start bellowing Adrian. Adrian will fight her way through the crowd and uh, get through the ropes and get into the ring and they'll clinch. Uh, Rocky will say, I love you, and we're out. And uh, after a lot of persuasion, I convinced the producers to uh, uh, come up with a couple of bucks to shoot that. We went back uh, into the em empty arena and uh, for half a day, <coughs> excuse me. That's all right. Um, and uh, we had half a day, and um, and we had Marty Scorsese's um, camera package. He was about to uh, do um, New York, New York, uh, for the same producers. So his uh, uh, camera package was sitting in their office. So we borrowed that, unbeknownst to Marty. <laughs> and um, did you tell him later? Uh, I certainly <laughs> did, and uh, he was very pleased. Uh, and um, we had uh, like twenty extras walking in front of the lens, looking like a crowd, and we shot it and we uh, put it together. And with that uh, uh, Bill Conti score behind it, it was it was a knockout. Right, and without that, I don't think I'd be sitting here today. The music is a big part of that. This is a tough question, I, and, and thank you for your time. And I know we, you have another engagement out front. We're going to wrap in a few minutes, but I wanted to... Do you kind of wish that it ended right there in terms of the Rocky story with the first one? I mean, I, I want to ask the man who was responsible for putting it on the screen if he had your druthers. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, um, uh, Sylvester and I had come up <coughs> with an idea uh, for a sequel. And um, it was going to be a trilogy. And uh, in the first one, we were going to have a scene where uh, uh, Rocky goes uh, to see the mayor of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. The mayor calls him in, and Rocky walks in uh, the mayor's office with his hat in his hands. And uh, the mayor is sitting there with his, his uh, record in front of him. And... Um, he said, uh, you know, there's no chance that you're going to win this thing, but you're going to make a, uh, you're going to make a couple of bucks. What are you going to do with that, uh, with that money? And Rocky says, uh, I'm going to run for mayor. Uh, so the second picture uh, was going to be uh, Rocky running for mayor on the reform ticket, and at the end of that picture, he would win. And the third picture uh, is. Rocky is the mayor now. Meanwhile, uh, Pauly, uh, the uh, Burt Young, right? Bert Young uh, character, uh, would get uh, caught stealing money from the city treasury. And Rocky being Rocky, he would take the fall uh, for uh, Pauly. It's and oh, Yeah. And, uh, and the last scene uh, of the trilogy would be uh, Rocky... Uh, going back into the ring, back in the in that uh, horrible place where we first found him, and the ring announcer, and, and the former mayor of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Rocky Balboa, and we would uh, <laughs> we would leave Rocky the way we found him. Um, so they have full circle. Right, but that uh, that didn't come to fruition. That didn't uh, uh, have you come seen about. the last one, the Rocky Balboa? Uh, yes, yes. How, what did you think of the way they ended the, the story? I guess it's ended right now, right? Well, uh, <laughs> as, you never know, do we? As, as you recall, <laughs> doing Rocky Seven, right? As you recall, I also did Rocky Five. Did Rocky Five, that's right. Now in Rocky Five, um, uh, Rocky dies. Um, that's how Sylvester had written it. Uh, he has the fight Originally. with uh, Tommy Gunn. Tommy, Tommy and I didn't like him too much. <laughs> he's uh, 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 badly beaten, and on the way to the hospital in the ambulance, uh, with his head in Adrian's lap, Rocky expires. And uh, the last scene is uh, on the steps of the hospital. Uh, Talia Shire, as Adrian comes out of the uh, hospital, and the world's press is assembled, and she announces uh, 
that Rocky is uh, is passed on. Uh, but as long as people believe in themselves, Rocky's spirit will live forever. And we see him running up the stairs from the first one. And I thought, wow, that's beautiful. That's a, You're giving I, me goosebumps because everybody who's gone to Philly runs up those stairs, don't they? Right, to it, the it, theme, right, Billy? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It, it, so would have been a, it would have been a beautiful ending. It, it was classic. And, um, and that's how Sylvester uh, had written it. So we start uh, to shoot. We're shooting in uh, chronological order. And a couple of weeks into the shooting, um, uh, the head of MGM at the time calls up and he said, oh, by the way, Rocky doesn't die. I said, he doesn't die? Why not? He said, well, these people don't die. Batman doesn't die. Superman does. Uh, James Bond, they don't die. I said, but... You know, you're, you're concerned with a sequel. You can have uh, uh, endless sequels. Rocky's a fairy tale. Uh, when Rocky dies, uh, the next one uh, can be Rocky in purgatory. We <laughs> examined his life. And does he go to heaven or hell? Well, at the end of that one, he goes to heaven. Now, the third one, he's in heaven. Somebody's got a problem on earth. Guess who goes down? <laughs> He fixes the budget. He does everything, right? Right. They didn't go for that. So uh, Rocky doesn't die, but the movie died. Because without that uh, ending, the movie made no sense. So right. it was unfortunate. So Rocky Balboa, the way it stands now, the last one, you like? Thumbs up? Thumbs down? I, I thought uh, uh, everything about it was uh, terrific except for two things. One, uh, stay, uh, well, three things, actually. I, re I remember running into Sylvester. Uh, before he started shooting it. And he asked, he goes, hey, John, what did you think? Well, he, t <laughs> he told me, uh, he said, the, uh, the movie opens and Adrian's dead. I said, what? When the movie opens, she's dead? And he said, yeah. I said, listen, if you don't want her in the movie, let, her, let, it, let the movie open and let her die in your arms. Yes. So you, you bellow, Adrian, and, and we know uh, there'll never be an answer. Uh, I said, that would be such a devastating opening, you'd have the audience in the palm of your hand for the rest of the movie. He said, no, 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 she's dead. So, um, my other uh, disappointment was um, that he didn't use uh, Sage, his uh, son, who played his uh, son in uh, Rocky V. Uh, and he said, no, nah, no, nah, he's overweight. And I said, so we use it. Rocky's use that as the script you're saying. Yeah, the story. It. Rocky's upset because he's his overweight. You know, uh, uh, no, no. Oh. Um, and then I thought everything uh, leading up to the fight, and he also didn't use uh, uh, um, uh, the girl who was around, uh, who he walked home in the first one. Right. Um, uh, he got. I think he should have uh, used uh, uh, the original. Anyway. Um, everything leading up to the fight, uh, I thought was very, very well done. Uh, but I thought the fight was a little flashy. It, um... It was unrocky like It was unstreet-like. Well, and it had too many star filters, and it was just, uh... Yeah. But, um, um, it, it did pretty well, and, uh, I thought everything leading up to that was, uh, very good. Yeah. So, Sylvester's a, uh, besides being a terrific actor, he's also a very good writer. Yeah, he is fabulous. And well, he's uh, doing a picture now um, that uh, uh, Schwarzenegger is evidently going to be in and is being written by Robert Kamen, who wrote the uh, Karate Kid movies.